Welcome back. It's to Plus Politics. The Minister of Transportation and former Governor of River State, Roti Miyamichi, has been suspended by the Igo Aguma led, uh, that's Ugo Aguma All Progressive uh, Congress faction in the state. This new development has deepened the crisis in the state chapter of the party, adding that both camps strived to gain control of the APC ahead of the 2023 general elections. The Amici faction of the party at, at the weekend declared the suspensions, uh, the suspension of uh, former Senator uh, Magnus Abe, Igo Aguma, Livingstone Wichi, Wogu Bombs, and all caretaker committee leaders inaugurated by Aguma. Channing also discuss this is uh, Francis Chilaka, a political analyst. Good evening, Mr. Chilaka. Good evening. Yeah, let's quickly look at this issue. And uh, for many political uh, watchers like you, I think the worry is, hasn't APC in River State learned their lessons with what happened in 2019? Or you have a different uh, interpretation to what is going on? Uh, well, the truth is that um, the Nigerian political landscape, people don't learn. Uh, people don't, um, they think it's all Uhuru, but yet it is not. Uh, I think that the, the issue happening in River State will continue uh, so long as we have situations where ex-governors want to impose who would be the next governor, they want to impose who would be a senator. They fail to understand that the moment you leave government house, you should give room to whoever is there. Yes, in the last election, they, with all this kind of brohaha, they didn't have a candidate and they lost out. It's obvious they haven't learned and it's going to happen again because the, the people themselves, I think the people don't even want APC in River State. So everybody is working hard to ensure that River State does not have a sustainable APC on ground. Okay, because uh, I'm looking at it now, maybe for a second, let's think a bit like Nigerian politicians to look at um, the investment of the person of um, Roti Miyamichi. This was someone whom a lot of people were shocked that he could leave PDP to join APC and work for uh, the party as it were. And uh, it is also on record that he spent so much to bring the party to where it is. Don't you think such a person, it might be difficult for him to just hands off and watch things happen without his influence? Well, we need to understand that Nigeria is evolving and the political landscape is evolving. People are beginning to become more politically aware and conscious. You can't uh, continue to be in power as if Power belongs to you. Power actually belongs to the people. And until our politicians begin to understand that, they'll keep having issues like this. I tell you, the, the truth is this. I mean, I mean, River State is predominantly a PDP state, whether we like it or not. So it's always difficult for it to move. And the people are at home with what PDP is doing. And I can assure you that this whole thing happening in Rivers right now, PDP has a hand in it. But the truth is that the um, ABC needs to understand that from the top down, people, Nigerians are dissatisfied, Nigerians are not happy, and so Nigerians themselves are becoming politically aware and conscious. M Mr. Chilaka, uh, maybe this is going to be like an argument uh, or a disagreement with you, uh, because I remember... I, ...for the people to take power back. Okay, Mr. Chilaka, I, I said that uh, this might look like a disagreement with you because uh, your opinion seems to be very popular. But what we saw in the last governorship election in Bayasa State, where we had, um, if not for what happened at the court, if not for what happened with the issue of certificate, APC are definitely taking a state like Bayasa just because it is about the gladiators, it's about the politicians who are you know, aligning together. You remember the story of Jonathan giving a tacit support to APC. So don't you think it is not necessarily true to say that River State is a PDP state looking at who and who make up this party? Well, you are looking at it from that perspective, but the question I should be asking you is, 
are you in River State? Have you taken time to carry the survey in River State to understand the mindset of the people? It's going to be tough for APC to take River State with the likes of um, Governor Wiki right now. It's going to be tough. You know, but the truth is this. It's time that our politicians put their house in order. They need to calm down and understand that the people matter. The problem with having politics in this country is that our politicians don't see the need to carry the people along after winning the elections. And it has to change. So, so long as the politicians believe that all they want is to win and remain in power, not minding the, the, what comes to the people at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. Looking at what's happening in Rivers now, you know that Wike has aligned with the people so much so that the people would do everything to support PDP in the next coming elections. And I can assure you that APC will lose out, even if they have the best candidate coming in the next election. I want to, I want to put it on record, like I always do, that uh, whatever you say <laughs> remains forever because the internet won't forget. And when you say that whoever the candidate is, might be a statement that you need to reconsider. But staying on the conversation, let's look at uh, how this suspension is being carried out. It's looking to me like, is this a child's play? You are suspending a sitting minister. You are suspending a former governor of the state, if not one of the founding fathers of the APC in River State. And also looking at uh, the issue of uh, Magnus Abbey, that's another strong member of APC in the state. Putting these two together, what is it about suspension and not suspension? Shouldn't the leadership of the party at the national weigh in? Well, well, you see, the, 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 the issue of suspension, we need to understand the constitution of the party. The party starts from the local government, from the wards to the local government, to the state, to the national. And you cannot join the party at the national without going to your wards to join. So when the ward or the local government says you're on suspension, it is a serious issue in our politics. And it brings back what I keep saying, that the people own the power, not the politicians. So something has gone wrong. You know, why the party at the grassroots level is saying, we don't want you in our party. We don't want you in our party. And I think that it's, it's, it's a sign. It happened in, 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 um, in a dose state. We saw it play out in a dose state when um, um, the, the Kuwait governor was um, removed from the party and he had to go to another party. So it shows you that the people have a say in who is in the party. The party is not just about the big, big names you hear because the big names also have just one vote. But the party belongs to the people. And most times when the people speak, we need to listen to them. Unfortunately, Nigeria is a country where we don't listen to the people. Nobody wants to listen to the people. The people are only useful, like I keep saying, during the elections when people want to win. After winning, what happens? So there must be something that these people have done at the grassroots that is affecting the grassroots. And the grassroots is saying, no, we don't want you anymore. And we need to move on. So I think that, you know, no matter how you look at it, it's a suspension, yes. It's, well, there'll be up and down. People will talk, people will do that. At the end of the day, let me tell you the truth. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to exchange of money. Hmm. That is what is at play now. It's going to hmm. come down to, you know, people wanting power, people wanting money, people wanting uh, some form of uh, gratification. And, you know, once they get it, uh, the suspension can be uplifted. But right now, the suspension still holds. So everybody will maintain the status quo. That's a very, that's a very, very cheeky one. And uh, qu quickly, I, 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 my, I, still on my question, I'm looking at some set of people were suspended by a faction, and this suspended set of people now suspended the leader of the other faction. So I'm looking at legality. I'm looking at the party at the national, uh, looking and looking away. Don't you think that in terms of party system, in terms of internal politics or internal democracy, this is the best time the party at the national should wield the big stick. This is not looking like, oh, the world suspended Amici from his war. It's looking like, oh, if you suspend, him, suspend me, I will suspend you, even when there are no you know, substantial issues warranting this suspension. 
Oh, well, you see, the national will only wait here when the state invites the national. And when the national finds out that, you know, things are getting out of hand. But right now, um, I know that um, APC has this, this rule that stops anybody from going to the courts or approaching the courts. So I know that, yes, it's an internal wrangling. It will be resolved. But it may not resolve in favor of everyone. But some people will get, you know, some reprieve. And at the end of the day, the state will take it up and then they'll bring it to the national. And then the national will be able to say, okay, those that are suspended, if they have not done anti-party, lift the suspension. But you see, the national is also very careful in passing instructions to the local government, the world, and the state. Because when you sit at the national and decide to impose power, impose your position on them, they also will inject. And you know that right now, everybody is uh, jumping party. People are camping from PDP to APC, APC to PDP, because the Nigerian politicians simply have nothing to offer the Nigerian people. Okay. So they always jump to where they think they can end meet. Mr. Chilaka, this is a bit personal, and uh, I will appreciate it if you have information on this. Um, I remember the kind of closeness that existed between Senator Magnus Abbey and the former governor of the state that is talking about Rotimi Amechi. I remember whether it is implicit or explicit about some kind of uh, uh, sacrifice that was allegedly uh, um, being played by Senator Magnus Abbey when uh, Dakuku became the governorship candidate. And uh, it is believed in some quarters that, oh, wait for your time. And it, when it was his time, it wasn't picked. But along the line, we saw Magnus Abbey having some kind of relationship with uh, Wiki. Couldn't, have, couldn't that have been the reason why Amechi is not looking at the side in endorsing him as the lead or me as a candidate of the party? Or how do you think this issue can be resolved? Or you don't even think this issue can be resolved between these two people? Well, a lot of water has passed um, under the bridge. Okay. Um, so it's going to be difficult to bring in uh, Rutina Abechi and Magnus Abe to a table. Uh, you see, the thing is, everybody in politics wants power. And everybody wants to be in control. And the Nigerian system is saturated with godfatherism, which is the main problem. Everybody wants to be seen as a godfather who has made you the governor and then the one to dictate to you. So, um, yes, Magnus Abbe said it clearly that he made sacrifices, but that his sacrifices were not... Um, Compensated. Like, his sacrifices were not... didn't pay off. Yes, it didn't pay off, and that he was not recognized for making such sacrifices. And you see, it's easy for anybody who makes sacrifice that is not recognized to move to where he feels he will get um, uh, some form of recognition. So it's an issue of, it's a power tussle between Ameji and Magnus Abbe. And I can tell you, it will not go down well because these two people will not agree on anything right now. Wow, these two people will not agree on anything right now. Let me underline the word right now so that we are not surprised uh, at the end of the day if the right now now becomes some kind of surprise for us. Don't you think? From what we've seen in Nigerian politics. Uh, well, I'll, yes, I will tell you that um, when, when, when I say right now, I am talking in terms of what is on ground. Okay. But knowing Nigerian politicians for what and who they are, uh, yes, they could settle, but it's going to mean that there's going to be a lot of sacrifice from the side of Amechi. He's going to give up a lot of things, which I think he's not ready for. And I know that Magnus Abe is not going to shift ground from where he is right now. Thank you so much, uh, Francis Chilaka, for your position. And uh, we hope that anyhow the whole thing turn out, it will be for the benefit of the people and not just this selected few. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. And quickly, we will take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take on the two issues discussed. Please don't go anywhere.
Here is my take. On the crisis in Southwest PDP, while the two gladiators had consistently denied existence of crisis, the foot soldiers did not only make make it obvious, the gladiators themselves are beginning to leave the realm of self-denial. The earlier declare admittance that um, the, the, the earlier declare admittance that they will work the part of reconciliation and possibly provide credible alternatives at the poll. On reverse APC crisis, what more can be said when a major opposition party refused to learn the lessons from its defeat in 2019? Not only was the party denied from participating due to internal wrangling, hmm, the party has also failed to play the role of opposition in the state as the ruling party continues to rule the state without any checks and balances. 2023 may look far away. However, if care is not taken, there will be a deja vu where PDP will have no one to contend with leaving the state with no option, which defeats the concept of democracy. And that's my take on the two issues discussed tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I am Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.